In this video, I'm going to summarize the entire book of Genesis while covering every important teaching. So the book of Genesis starts with two distinct accounts of creation. In the first, God creates the world in six days and rests on the seventh, establishing the Sabbath. This account emphasizes the order and goodness of creation, with humanity, both male and female, created in God's image to steward the earth. The second account focuses on the creation of the first man, Adam, placed in the Garden of Eden, followed by the creation of the first woman, Eve, to be his companion. The narrative then transitions to the fall of humanity. The serpent tempts Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which God has forbidden. Both Adam and Eve eat the fruit, leading to their awareness of their nakedness and their expulsion from Eden as a consequence of their disobedience. This is one of the most well-known stories in the Bible and is foundational in explaining the presence of sin and suffering in the world. Next, we have the story of Cain and Abel. Adam and Eve's sons, Cain and Abel, offer sacrifices to God. When God favors Abel's offering over Cain's, Cain is jealous and he kills Abel. This act introduces murder into the human story and Cain is marked and exiled by God, yet also protected by him. Next, we have the Great Flood. This is another story that I'm sure most people have heard. As humanity grows and becomes increasingly wicked, God decides to cleanse the earth with a flood. However, he finds righteousness in Noah and instructs him to build an ark to save himself, his family, and pairs of all animals. After the flood, God makes a covenant with Noah, promising never to destroy the earth by flood again. And this is signified by a rainbow. Next, we have the story of the Tower of Babel. The story of the Tower of Babel explains how the diversity of languages came to be. Humanity, seeking to make a name for themselves, attempts to build a tower to the heavens. Doing so would bring them glory, or so they believed. God watched his people as they built the tower and realized that they were becoming immensely powerful because of their ability to communicate. He realized that people would be able to do just about anything, potentially giving them too much power over a world that was meant to be ruled by God. So before the tower was completed, God made everyone speak different languages. Now they were no longer able to understand each other fluidly and the builders were unable to complete the tower. This caused people to spread out across the world, which is how linguistic and cultural diversity began. Genesis then moves on to the patriarchs of Israel. The narrative of the book of Genesis shifts to focus on Abraham, called by God to leave his home and go to a land that God would show him. God promises to make Abraham a great nation, to bless him and make his name great. This Abrahamic covenant, marked by God's promise of land, descendants and blessing, is a pivotal moment in Genesis. Abraham's journey is marked by faith and occasional failures, such as passing off his wife Sarah as his sister in Egypt. God reaffirms his covenant with Abraham, even as Sarah remains barren. Eventually, through divine intervention, and at the age of 90, Sarah gives birth to Isaac, fulfilling part of God's promise. Abraham's faith is profoundly tested when God commands him to sacrifice Isaac. A test he passes when a messenger from God stops Abraham before he can complete the sacrifice. The story then moves on to Isaac and his family. So Isaac, Abraham's son, inherits the covenant. His story includes conflict over wells with the Philistines and blessing his sons, Esau and Jacob. The narrative highlights the deception by which Jacob, with his mother Rebekah's help, receives the blessing meant for Esau, his elder brother. Jacob flees to his uncle's house, where he marries both Leah and Rachel, and builds a large family. However, his time here is marked by both deception and prosperity. On his return to Canaan, Jacob wrestles with the divine being and is renamed Israel, signifying his struggle with God and humans and is prevailing. The narrative then focuses on Joseph, Jacob's favorite son who is sold into slavery in Egypt by his jealous brothers. Joseph endures slavery and imprisonment, but his ability to interpret dreams leads to his rise to power as a pharaoh's second in command. A severe famine brings Joseph's brothers to Egypt seeking food. Unrecognized by them, Joseph tests their character before revealing his identity. The reunion is emotional and Jacob's entire family moves to Egypt, setting the stage for the subsequent book of Exodus. So let's look at some of the themes and significance of the book of Genesis. So Genesis portrays God as the ultimate authority, the creator and sustainer of the universe. 
This divine sovereignty is evident in the acts of creation, judgment, and covenant making. At the same time, humans are being depicted as responsible agents. Their choices and actions have real consequences, as seen in Adam and Eve's decision in the Garden of Eden, and in Cain's choice to kill his brother. The narrative really underscores the tension between divine control and human freedom. The concept of the covenant is pivotal in Genesis and forms a key part in the narrative's theological framework. A covenant in the biblical sense is a binding agreement between God and humanity. Often accompanied by promises and stipulations, the Noahic covenant establishes a basic understanding of God's mercy and promise not to destroy the earth again by flood, symbolized by the rainbow. The Abrahamic covenant is more complex, involving promises of land, descendants and blessings that have far-reaching theological and historical implications. The stories of the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and Joseph, highlight the theme of faith. Their trust in God, even in uncertain and difficult circumstances, is central to their narrative. Abraham's willingness to sacrifice Isaac is often cited as a supreme example of faith. Moral complexity is also a prominent theme. Genesis does not shy away from depicting the flaws and moral failings of its characters, presenting them in a realistic and human light. This portrayal invites reflection on the nature of morality, obedience, and God's grace in the midst of human imperfection. Genesis serves as a foundational text for understanding the origins of the world, for human beings, sin, and the chosen people of Israel. These narratives provide a backdrop for the entire biblical story and are crucial for understanding the identity and beliefs of both Jews and Christians. The creation stories, the accounts of the patriarchs, and the early history of the Israelites help to form a sense of identity and purpose, portraying the Israelites as part of the continuous plan by God. There is also a theme of promise, particularly seen in God's promises to Adam, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And its eventual fulfillment is a recurring theme throughout the book of Genesis. This theme reflects the faithfulness of God, even when human beings are unfaithful, or the fulfillment of the promise that seems to be delayed or impossible. The unfolding of these promises often occurs over generations, suggesting a long-term view of God's plans and the importance of faith and patience in the biblical narrative. Genesis presents a balanced view of God's nature, showing both his capacity for judgment, as seen in the stories of the fall, the great flood and the Tower of Babel, and his grace, as seen in dealings with the patriarchs and his promises of blessings and redemption. The interplay of grace and judgment is central to understanding the biblical concept of God. Even in judgment, God's actions often contain elements of grace and mercy, pointing towards redemption and restoration. So in conclusion, Genesis serves as a foundation for the biblical narrative, offering profound insights into God's character, human nature, and the dynamics of faith and morality. It sets the stage for the themes and stories that will be developed throughout the rest of the Bible.